Uh, as you know, AFCON will be kicking off very soon and we'll be bringing you uh, previews from all over the, the continent. And we're gonna start in, in Ghana, in Accra with uh, Maftau who works for Joy FM. He's a, he's a journalist for, sports journalist for, for Joy FM. Uh, Maftau, welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, the golden generation of Ghana hasn't delivered, you know? Uh, when you had Asamoa Gyan, Michael Essien, uh, Dede Ayu in his prime. Um, Suleiman Tari, Laya Kingston. My goodness, you you name them. What? Like I think the last time you won Afcon, uh, Abedi Pele was still playing. <laughs> right. Yes. And, and there's so much expectation for Ghana to win something, anything, you know, because even the, even your, even your president, uh, Keto Kraku, he calls you a powerhouse, but <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to show for it. <laughs> Tell me, what's been, what's been the, the problem there? Actually, um, this is quite a difficult question for me to answer because uh, maybe I should be someone who is within the playing body or the technical team or the management of the team to have a, a very perfect picture of why the team has failed to win an AFCON in the last 39 years. Uh, this year is a 40th year. Uh, we are also made to understand that uh, since Stephen Apia took over as captain of the Black Stars, he decided to bring everyone under one umbrella uh, the mantra of Stephen Appiah was that if he has the captain Amban, he just for 90 minutes. So he never saw leadership as power. He only saw leadership as a responsibility. And uh, he felt that he needed to bring everyone under one umbrella. So when he did, yes, we qualified for first ever World Cup. We became, quote and unquote, uh, continental football icons. Let me put it that way because we became a respected nation. We reached uh, the FIFA ranking 14th in, uh, in 2010, we were in the quarter final of the World Cup, in the final of the African Cup of Nations 2015, we were in the final. The last uh, 10 editions, or let me say, the, uh, since 2008, Ghana was always in the semi-final and made it to the final three times until the 2019 edition, where the team when got knocked out of the, the competition from the on a 16th stage of, of, of the tournament. So you are looking at a team where everyone, every Ghanaian believed that we had the quality to win the African Cup, but unfortunately we never won it. Um, recent times people will tell you that you don't need to have the best of players individually to go, to, uh, to go and win. But I am of the opinion that uh, you need the best teams to win. Uh, maybe collectively as a unit, we might be very good fighting for a title. But when you have individual stars, like you mentioned, Stephen Napier, Laya Kingston, Mike Lysian, Suleiman Tari, Andrea Yoa, Samuel Jan, Hans Sape, John Mensa, John Pencil, Jonathan Mensa, all these stars, Antina Nan, Otto Ado. We never won it. Every Kado, we never won it, probably. This could just be the year we might be going in because uh, we are we have this mantra that um, and it's been drafted from from the Holy Bible. We forty years in the wilderness, right? So forty years, we are hoping that we will win it this year. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, you you reminded me of Junior Agogo. I sure yeah, like two thousand eight African Cup. Exactly. He was a beast in that tournament. Exactly. Like, like Ghana has had so much talent, but no, no delivery in terms, of, in terms of trophies. How much pressure is on this current uh, side to, to even reach the finals of this tournament? This, this, this group, they are not under any pressure to win because Ghanaians are not expecting them to win. I think that... Um, the previous years, the team actually struggled because Ghanaians expected them to win, especially after their showing in the 2008, uh, 2006 World Cup. 
hosting the 2008 African Cup, the whole nation was behind the team, expecting them to win. The government then invested a lot of resources. It was the first time ever government decision to pay winning bonuses of $10,000 to the players. Government was so committed to win it. 2010, after the World Cup disappointment, there was the belief that 2012 was our year. Unfortunately, we lost the semi-final to Zambia and we couldn't make it. 2015, penalty shootout, the team took two goals lead. Ghanaians were expected, very expectant of this team to win, unfortunately. So this time around, they are going into a competition where many Ghanaians have zero expectations of this team. Maybe just a few, because those of us who are quite close to the team would always tell you that when you don't expect much from the team, oftentimes they go out there to deliver. So um, there's this cautious optimism within certain quarters of the Ghanaian community that um, the Black Stars can win, but the boys are not under any pressure to go and win. If they fail to win, everyone will be okay. The only disappointment we will have is that many will again repeat one thing that has been reprised so many times. We're investing into a national team that has won nothing in 40 years. And uh, they would always tell you that, put the money into something else. Why pump it into a black star that is not winning anything? That's the only pressure that will be on these boys. But there's no pressure on them to get on the field and win. If there's a pressure, if there's a certain pressure within the playing body who say that, okay, Ghanaians don't want us to win. They don't expect us to win. It's not as if Ghanaians don't want them to win. Ghanaians wanted them to win. But Ghanaians don't expect them to win. This means that the players have built their own pressure wanting to deliver for the country. But it's not as if the Ghanaian populace is demanding that go out there and win the competition for us. True, true, true. Hope, hope springs eternal. Now, let's look at, yeah. let's, let's look at this team now. Yeah. Uh, back in the days, you know, you looked forward to 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 Daddy Ayu, you know, because yeah. he was the star of the team. Uh, you had Kevin yeah. Prince Boateng, Michael yeah. Essiens, even John Painzel, you know, he was a character, Asamoah Gyan. So with this current crop of players, besides, you know, those guys, even I don't think Jordan Ayu is 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 something to 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 look forward to. Are there other players within, considering that you know, Mohamed Kudu, Kudus is out right now? So are yeah. there any other players that, you know, Africans can look forward to in that Ghanaian squad? We have many. We have many players that um, Africans should be looking forward to see in this tournament. And uh, I will talk about Kamal Din Suleimana, who has been very impressive since completing the move to... Rene in the French League are. Um, Abdul Fattah Isahako, a youngster who has become a mainstay in the national team. Then there's Edmond Ado of Sheldon Strasbourg and Thomas Partey. 2019, Jordan Ayu was arguably Ghana's best player in the African Cup of Nations. Uh, we expect him once again to deliver, once again to lead the line once again, to take responsibility when it matters most, rise to the occasion, pull the strings that many have said that he cannot do, and get other results. So I, I am looking at a Black Stars team that has got a potential to be champions, but with, with zero stars, because uh, Kamal didn't need to make a name for himself. Atau is here to make a name for himself. Isahaku is here to make a name for himself. Apart from Andre Ayo and uh, Jonathan Mensa, who were part of the, 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 the team that Milovan Ryback had in the 2010 African Cup of Nations and the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. The rest of the players are new. And um, you would be looking up to Milovan to provide that... Um, showing up of the players and provide them that responsibility and that mental fortitude to go out there and, 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 and deliver for the country. That's why I, I'm saying that the boys are not under any pressure to go out there and win. It, if it was Michael Asi and if it was a Samoa Jan, if it was Clement Tari, Kelvin Prince, Borden, Martin Amon, Stephen Appiah would go out there and say, we've got a team capable of beating any opposition in the world. 
but this is a team that uh, who are young, very young players who are now coming in. The likes of Gideon Mensah, Barbara Man. Barbara Man, he has played at an AFCON before 2017 edition. He was, he was part of that team. So he has played AFCON before. Mubarak Wakaso played the 2013 edition, played the 2015 edition, played the 2017 edition. This is 2019 he was there. So he has that experience. The only unfortunate thing about Mubarak Wakaso is uh, injury concerns he's got. And uh, they are working on uh, ensuring that he will be fit, fit, fit for the tournament. Kudus is out, but I still think that we, we have boys who rise to the occasion and, and, and deliver. Speaking of uh, Milovan, how, how has his arrival changed the mood of Ghanaians and the mood in the, in the national team? I remember when I first reported the story that he was coming back on September 14. Many people had said that the GFP were testing the waters. And if you go on my joy online right now and read the story when we, when we published it after Gary insisted that because I was actually waiting for a contract because I knew I was going to get a contract before I publish all the details. Gary, my editor called me and said, Moksha, let, let the story fly. When we published the story, if you go on my journal online and read that story, many people were not, did not even believe the story. They never thought the FA were going to bring back Mildo because they've said that since he left Ghana, his, his tenures have been, have been poor in their definition. But after that performance against Zimbabwe, when he was announced, I mean, the, the first play, that was when people began to believe that uh, Milo has got what it takes to, to deliver for a country. Subsequent games uh, were not that impressive, but Milo will tell you that what matters is a win. And what mattered were the Wins that the team picked. That draw was uh, draw against Ethiopia uh, in South Africa was quite disappointing. The performance too very disappointing. But the return of Milo have brought some kind of optimism into the, the Ghanaian community. Though there are some people who feel that he cannot pull in the magic. The magic that can be done will be the magic of the players. If the players are committed to winning. They will definitely win, and uh, it will happen. We are all hoping that we go out there and we win. Speaking of winning, you're in Group C with Morocco, yeah. Comoros, yeah. on. Yes. Yeah, like, yes. for me, that's one of the toughest groups they, like, not much is known about Comoros, but they are the first countries to qualify yeah. for AFCON. Gabon, yeah, yeah. Gabon is no child's play, you know, they have uh, Pierre Emerick Obama yeah. in there. And then you have Morocco, they, they did very well under, what's his name? He's in Saudi Arabia now, I uh, have Renan. You know, even yeah. though ZH is not there, you know, they have, who's that boy from PSG? He plays for the Moroccan. But yeah, like, you, you are in a very, you know, very uh, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I was trying to recollect his name. Uh, uh, oh, I forgot his name like that. Yeah, yeah. Was like, but, uh, but I know uh, the player you're referring to. Yeah, but you know, like, yo, your group is, is tough. Where do you think you pick up points here? Well, all these things are familiar for us. There are teams that the Black Stars have played before. Two different players came up against them. This current group of players have also played Morocco in a final match. Uh, which was in Morocco, the team lost 1-0. They played so well in that game. Uh, that was under former coach C.K. Akono, and then conceded late into that fixture. Uh, the 2008 African Cup of Nations when the tournament was played in Ghana. Ghana defeated Morocco in that competition. I remember uh, we've, we've beaten Gabon too before. Comoros, Comoros to the Black Stars defeated them in 2015, if my memory serves me right. So these are teams that the Black Stars know so well. Uh, we are very much aware of their threat. Um, the technical team have had scouts uh, all over monitoring these, these teams. Um, just about two, three days ago, I spoke to three of the scouts of the Black Stars um, who were out there to monitor the various 
uh, uh, opposition of, 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 of the Black Stars going into the African Cup of Nations. Um, you know, most of the countries are, are outside. Uh, they are, some are in UAE. So the scouts are out there. They've been providing the technical team with daily updates of what they have seen in, in, in the opposition. So I think that Morocco will be a much tougher opponent. But I don't think Morocco will beat the Black Stars. I don't think Gabon will beat us. I don't think Comoros will beat Ghana. I, I think this is a group that Ghana can pick about seven points. I'm saying seven points because if Ghana is able to pick a point against uh, Morocco and get six against Comoros and Gabon, that would be seven points and that will qualify them to the next stage of the competition. I, I guess I'm just optimistic about the chances of the team going into this, into this very competition. Like, like I stated earlier, when you have zero expectations of the team, they rise to the occasion. And I'm thinking that this is a group that Black Star can qualify out of. So I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, there's a team out there that, that, that can stop them. Wow. Oh, wow. That is I think, really I think, optimistic. I, I think that, that that would be a, a wild call, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is a wild call. All right, Mavta, we will we'll leave it here for now. If I'll, I'll come back to you if the the Black Stars are in the are in the quarterfinals. Thank you. There's, there's actually there's actually a, a final match against Algeria uh, last Tuesday. So yeah. yeah. I'm sure that, that game should give the coach an idea about what is likely to happen in, in the tournament. Most of the players who arrived in camp uh, on, on Monday. Yeah. So yeah, uh, though the time is not enough for, for the technical team to prepare with the rest of the squad for the competition. True. But I'm very convinced that yeah, they'll, 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 they'll be able to, to do something. I, I, I'm just so mad at CAF that they've decided to to the whims and caprices of these European clubs and that of FIFA by allowing member associations not to have their players uh, as early as possible for, for the tournament. I, I think that is a sign of disrespect to our very own competition. This is our World Cup. And if there's anyone who can rise and defend the African Cup, CAF should be leading the way and not deciding with FIFA and anti-European clubs. I, that's quite disappointing. You cannot expect much from these players in this tournament because they will not have enough time to rest and give up their best for their countries. They are human beings. They will be tired legs. Quite disappointing from CAF, actually.